Hello, everyone. I didn't put on my wig today, you know. No fur coat today, it's just, just me and my little silk shirt trying to feel special or whatnot. Um, I'm Marissa Leah Ping. I am so excited and grateful to be here with you all today to talk about my personal passion for poetry and our collective passion for serving students. So I have been performing poetry since I was in high school. I've performed it through Amsterdam Theater on Broadway, the world famous Apollo Theater, United Nations, Barclays Center, so many other places. Um, poetry has been extremely transformative in my life. And because I come from a really big poetry background, I'm really big on affirmation. So I'm gonna share some things with you all today. So if you hear something that you like, you can snap. Can I get some snaps? Yes, you can say yes. You can be like, girl, girl. You can say that part, copy, say less, tell me more. All these things are acceptable. If you wanna put your arm out and just send me some energy and some light, we can do that too, because we're gonna be real interactive and in this together. So when I was applying to college, my mother told me, if you do not get a scholarship, you will have to join the Navy. And at that point in my life, I was like, okay, uh, but if my mother said I was doing something, then guess what? I was doing it. So mostly out of fear, I applied to all of these different scholarships, and I didn't think I would get one until I did. And I got a full tuition scholarship to attend St. John's University, and that college access transformed my life. It didn't really hit me how transformative college could be for students on college campuses until I started my master's at Indiana University Bloomington. Yes, okay, Hoosiers. So I did my master's at Indiana University Bloomington, which I graduated from this May. Um, yes. So I started to think about, I was getting more student affairs knowledge and I began to build a bridge between higher education and poetry. My friend asked me to perform in an event and I performed on college campuses before, so I didn't think anything different of this moment, but something clicked in that moment. I actually wanna share the poem that I performed at that event with you all today, if that's okay. Can I get some snaps? Wonderful. The title of this poem is, In This Universe, Black Women Are the Moon. Some folk wonder what it might be like to be the moon. Us black women know what it means to shine so bright people be afraid of you. They misplace my pain for anger. Black women sway slow and steady into the sky reminding herself of her gentleness. The first person that came to the moon was some white man. Them always chasing black women, go out of space for us. Some folk come to the moon just to say they was on the moon, but don't nobody ask the moon how it was doing. They figure the moon's so strong, it don't ever get tired of lighting the entire earth. Moons don't cry, where they do that at? Moon be like, ain't I a woman? Some folk don't believe me and continue to wonder what it might be like to be the moon. So I, the moon, repeat the poem again. I know what it means to shine so bright people be afraid of me. Misplace my pain for anger. I remind myself of my gentleness. White men go out of space for me. Some come in me. Don't nobody ask, they figure. Black women don't get tired. Where they do that at? We be like, ain't we woman? Thank y'all. So, thank you. So immediately after I read the title of the poem, A Black Woman Express, yes! And for those of you who aren't familiar with black womanhood, yes is a universal term. It's like, I see you, I hear you, we in this together, I got you. See, we here, we here. And in that moment, I felt safe. People came up to me and they said, thank you so much for sharing your truth, Marissa. I also feel invisible and undervalued. Oh wow, I didn't know that was your lived experience. I'm so happy you got to share yourself with us today. And I felt validated and I wondered how many other black students on college campuses are looking for spaces where they feel validated, where they feel seen, where they felt like they were a part of a community. These spaces are what I call communal poetry environments. Communal poetry environments can be formed through open mics, poetry slams, poetry workshops, and more. They are community-oriented spaces that promote black student success through poetry and storytelling. 
They take on a black feminist ideology by positioning students as the intellectuals of their lives, allowing them to self-define themselves, highlight their common challenges, and honor their multifaceted intersectional identities. What makes communal poetry environments effective on college campuses is the CC model. So the CC model gives us nine indicators for culturally engaging campus environments. So many of these indicators are present in communal poetry environments, but the two that I want to focus on today is collectivist cultural orientations, which are spaces that focus on the success of a community rather than the individual, and culturally validating environments, which are spaces that validate the norms, practices, and values of racially diverse student populations, and in this case, black students. So I want to tell you all about a time I created a communal poetry environment. I was presenting at the National Conference on Student Leadership, and I came in, and automatically, the room was in lecture style. And I was like, ooh, what I want to share my story to someone who has their back to me? So I arranged all the seats in a circle so that each participant could see everyone. Black students often engaging in spaces on college campuses where they feel further marginalized and invisible. This physical aspect of communal poetry environments communicates to black students that I see you, that everyone in this space is valued, and that no one will be on the physical margins of this space. We then went on to do introductions, and I allowed each participant to introduce themselves. And it was a large group, and I know sometimes when we have large groups, we don't want people to introduce themselves, but this introduction gave the power of self-definition and returned it back to the student. Black students often engaging in spaces on college campuses where they are told who they have to be and how they have to show up and what their blackness is going to mean. But when I tell you, you get to name and self-define who you want to be in this space, the power of self-definition is being returned back to the student. We then went on to create some community guidelines as a collective. And these community guidelines required every of us, including myself, as a, as a facilitator, to play a role in building this space. Two of our community guidelines were to listen actively and to affirm our peers. So everyone had a role to play. No one was going to be passive and just existing in the space. You were going to be a listener. You were going to be a receiver. You were going to be affirming people in this space. Halfway through the workshop, students were giving writing prompts and then asked to share out. I wish you all could hear all of the stories. These students wrote stories about social justice issues that directly impacted them. They became the intellectual, the expert, and the historian of their own life. No matter how much research and theory we have, no one's going to tell me about what it's like to be an Afro-Caribbean queer black woman from Brooklyn, New York, right? That's my story, and that's my own. And these students got to experience that themselves, and it was amazing. While they were sharing their truth, some of their peers were snapping for them. They were clapping for them. They were like, yes, that part, all those things. And I got to experience it and live in it and also affirm them as well, and it was beautiful. Also, some students were sitting there thinking like this. How many of you know that um, the emoji that's like this? Right? They were thinking really deeply because they were thinking, I've never heard this before. Wow, there's so much diversity in blackness. Now I'm learning about someone else's different experience. So that's how we are honoring our common identities and also highlighting our multifaceted intersectional identities. This communicates to black students a few things because their experiences, particularly at historically white institutions, are described through racism, isolation, invisibility, hypervisibility. And this communicates to black students that I see you, I'm listening, someone is watching, I hear you. And most importantly, I believe you. How many black students or professionals in this room have had a moment where they have not been believed before? By the raise of hands. Absolutely, whether it was on a micro level or a macro level, this communicates to black students that I believe you. So if you all are like, you know, Marissa, this is great, this is cool or whatever, you know, but I'm not an artist, I don't know how to do this, that's fine. It's an amazing opportunity for you to collaborate with local community artists that are representative of the populations in which you are trying to serve. Bring someone in. Let them help you in creating communal poetry environments. This is also not only for the Office of Multicultural Affairs or campus activities or social justice programming, but this can be effective for faculty members in your classroom. Imagine creating a communal poetry environment in your, and embedding that into your curriculum. This can be impactful for the Office of Career Services, the Office of Student Conduct, the Office of Health and Wellness, and so many other functional areas across student affairs. When you are creating communal poetry environments, it is imperative that you use ideologies and frameworks that take a strength-based perspective. So consider how I use a black feminist ideology which centers some of the people on the margins of the black community at the center. We are positioning the voices and the narratives of black women at the center of communal poetry environments. You want to implement practices that are reflective of these ideologies and frameworks. So sometimes we, we get the theory, but then we just, it just don't make it to the practice. But you want to make sure that it makes it to practice. So consider how we created community guidelines as a collective. 
which speaks to the collectivist cultural orientations of communal poetry environments from the CC model, okay? There are so many ways where you can continue to be innovative and creative leaders on your college campuses. Step outside your comfort zone. If it feels a little weird and unnatural, then that's probably right. I want to thank you all so much for landing with me all today, and I hope that you continue to be creative and innovative leaders. Thank you.